But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you. And you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. Who had done this thing. Her action created a reaction. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and, and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has corrected all of this. And then he said something powerful. He said, go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now listen, he added peace. In the, in the Greek, that word peace is synonymous with prosperity. He said, go in prosperity and be healed. Why? Because she had spent all that she had. She was broke. Well, now he's saying, I've not just taken care of the issue of blood, I've taken care of your money issue. And I know you'll, you'll be thinking, well, but wait a second, money's just the root. No, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Money in and of itself isn't good or bad. It's, it's how you use it. It's like, it's like the, the, the word is a sword. We can use it against people or for people. Ephesians 4.24 says, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God. Now listen, in true righteousness and holiness. I think that so often we live our lives with a form of righteousness and a form of holiness. And you know what? God wants us to be in true righteousness and true holiness. See, that's when you start winning. See, the new man is the fruit of God's word. We're, we're, what, what Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service, and don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the word of God. See, you listening to God's word, you receiving God's word, you catching this, receiving, can you call it a receiver? You catch God's word. You know, it, it's interesting, what we, we all love football. If, you're, if your team wants to win, they have to block, they have to tackle, and they have to catch the dead gum ball. But you know what? There'll be pre-snap penalties that'll happen. So you go from being second two to second seven, completely different game. And you know what? That's a lot of people that are sitting in church today that leave the church and it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday they have a pre-snap penalty and it's like, oh my gosh, we're behind the eight ball now. You don't have to live your life behind the eight ball. The new man is the fruit of God's word. True righteousness, true holiness is what occupies your life. It's 2 Corinthians 5.12, it says, for we don't commend ourselves again to you but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. He's, let me tell you, Paul's drawing a line here. There's people who act like they're boasting in God, act like they're trusting God, but it's not in their heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it's for God. And if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And if he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard... Therefore, here's why he said this, because this is a mouthful. He said, we regard no one after the flesh. Not that you're a mama, not that you're a businessman, not that you're a coach. We don't regard you according to the flesh, even though we've known Christ. We, they knew him by the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He's a new creature, a new creation. 
Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See, God's word is working in you. And, and verse 18, verse 17 is so quotable. But verse 18 is, is incredible power. Now, you're on a winning streak. Now, all things are of God. You're not listening to me. If you're a new creation in Christ, old things have passed away, all things have become new, right? Now, all things are of God. You're like, wait, it can't be that easy. No, it's not if you stop running. You take that next step, you're winning again. Let me tell you, God's will for your life is for you to win. I was sent a podcast that I listened to about five minutes of it. And there were two guys discussing something. And one of the guys, I thought, man, he really knows. And the other guy just wanted to punch him in the mouth. Because he's talking about, look, you don't reach godliness in your life until you suffer. And that suffering's got to be every single day. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Please tell me what you, please tell me. The suffering's attached to my sacrifice. And you know what that suffering is? It's usually social. It's usually me being, me being a bit, oh, entitled. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Can, can I tell you the ministry of reconciliation is big enough, broad enough, wide enough, high enough that you can't carry anything else. So if you're here and you're, you're a business person or you're a plumber or you're, you're, you're a politician or you're a, or whatever you are, let me tell you, this ministry of reconciliation, it, it, it's all that we can handle. And so it's not just whoever stands on the stage with a mic is the one that's in. They call us ministers. Yeah, we're all called to it. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us. Has committed to us. And you know what? There's no shadow of turning. He's not taking it back. Has committed to us the word of reconciliation. See, be reconciled, be, be, be restored to God. That's our, that, that's our duty as Christians. Man, somebody's in error. It's like, man, let me help you. No, I don't want your help. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow because I'm relentless. Because I'm going to compel them in that his house may be full. I'm going to give them no choice but to enter in. This is a winning streak that God wants us to live we're, we're restored as sons and daughters now. We're not on the outside looking in anymore. See, and, and can, can I just ask for elders and pastors to come to each side of the stage? Um, and, and what's become customary in our church is I'm going to ask four simple questions. And, um, and really, honestly, this is probably 80% of this gathering because it's family. You're restored as sons and daughters. You guys could have walked across here. Four quick questions. You guys, some of you guys can recite this with me. But listen, this is 80% of why we're here, what's happening right now. And I say that because the devil's gonna try to dupe people into not partaking in it. Man, I can handle it. I can deal with it myself. No, let me tell you what's standing on each side of the stage are, it is the word of reconciliation. It's restoration with God. Is your life right with God? That's question number one. If it's not, please get up out of your seat and come forward. Is Jesus the Lord of your life? If not, please come up to each side of the stage. Please get out of your seat. I, I, the, there's a begging process to this ministry where it's like, look, we don't want to go any for, further as a family here without everyone right with God, everyone with Jesus as Lord of their life. Because too many people are getting advice from the world. 
saying there's a certain amount of steps you have to go through before you get free of an addiction. Well, let me tell you, those steps are how many it takes for you to get up here to each side of the stage. Is your life right with God? Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Here's a great one. Are you filled? Are you baptized with the Holy Spirit? You think, man, I did that back at junior high youth camp. No, it's, Paul says, be being filled with the Spirit of God. We don't, you don't want the Spirit of the world right now. I'm telling you, the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. It's time for us to fulfill God's purpose. And the only way we fulfill God's purpose is, is the second chapter of Acts. And then beyond, the 19th chapter of Acts. Immersing ourselves in God's word. Immersing ourselves in God's love. Immersing ourselves in God's spirit. And, and number four is, is there anything we can pray for you about? And you might think, man, I don't want, I don't want anybody to know. Yeah, I don't either. But here's what the alternative is. I was on the telephone, an important phone call just this week, and I was driving through the parking lot and I'm looking at the construction, but I'm on, this, I'm on a very important call. Well, another vehicle pulled up beside me and said, and, and I didn't have the phone here, I had it through my truck and said, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, yeah, but I'm on, I'm on the phone right now. Let me get finished with, yeah, but it only take five minutes, okay, but I'm on the phone right now. Um, I, 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 it's not a place where I can pause. Um, and and he, he said, yeah, but I, I need to talk to you. This is very important. I said, okay, I get it. Just let me finish this phone call. Let me tell you, that's the alternative. It's not good for anybody. I'm telling you, your next step, you getting out in front, if you're behind in the race you're running, is however many steps it takes for you to get on each side of the stage. And we have ample help up here to help you. So everybody pray with me. Father God, I give you my life. I make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life and whom I trust. God, I thank you. No weapon formed against me will ever prosper. I'm a child of the king. I'm an inheritor of the kingdom. And I'm a joint heir with Jesus. God, I thank you that I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free with nothing missing and nothing broken. Sitting here today, I'm made whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to Guts Church YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Chano Trevino, the assistant pastor here at Guts Church. And on behalf of our leadership team, our staff, our church, it's our hope that this message met you right where you are. If it did, I bet there's someone you know who could use the encouragement of this message in their life. And you sharing it with them can make all the difference. The mission of Guts Church is to help people win. And you can be a part of that simply by sharing, or better yet, inviting someone to tune into Guts Church online with you every week. Take that next step to be a part of what God is doing right now in this moment in time by being committed to showing up, placing a premium on God's word, and receiving all that God has for you. You can share this message, gather your friends for services, make it a priority to make this the place you want to be. God has so much for you. I truly believe that. We love you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you soon.